should direct our thanks and appreciation to God for giving us this opportunity and it's a huge blessing from him that we are here and we are uh, able and willing uh, to make contact with him and enjoy the contact and that is that is a, a, uh, a high position that God has chosen us to be in today and so we all should direct our thanks and appreciation to God and and make sure that we understand it, that this is, this is because of divine providence, and this is not by accident, and this is not by luck or fortune. Uh, again, this is by divine design that we are here, and God has chosen us to be the recipient of this huge honor that we are receiving today. Uh, <clears throat> so, gratefulness and thankfulness is a godlike quality, and so we should follow his path, and, and so we should... Uh, Return in kind and make sure that, that um, we are grateful to him for everything that, that he's doing for us. And so uh, it's, it's a huge honor to be grateful to him and, and his uh, um, worship that, that we are offering him. It's, uh, it's an honor for us. And so we should, we should uh, steadfastly persevere in this, in this situation, in this manner. Um, <clears throat> So today what I wanted to, to discuss with you is that um, today we came here and, uh, and we are, uh, I'm going to go to chapter 6, verse 151, and God says, um, <clears throat> say, come let me tell you what your Lord has prohibited for you, that you never set up anything as a partner for him, and you shall be good, be good to your parents. And you shall not kill your children from the fear of poverty. We provide for you as well as them. And do not approach vice, be it public or private. And you shall not kill a soul, for God has made it sacred, except in the course of justice. He thus has decreed these commandments for you, that you may think. Okay, so... <clears throat> Uh, God wants to make an honest person out of us, and so I want to I want to to tell you this: a lot of these things, these commandments, we break. Okay, so uh, human beings, we have a plentitude of of weaknesses, human weaknesses, and so uh, so we should we should make sure that that we understand that our weaknesses are different; they're not all the same. So. Uh, and I want to I want to just stress on one one here one one commandment here, so that we provide for you as well as them, and do not approach vice, be it public or private. Okay. So again, I'm going to go back. Okay. And do not pr approach vice, be it public or private. <clears throat> okay. There are two commandments in the Ten Commandments. Okay. And the two commandments. Or thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not covet. This statement here bundles those two up. God is saying that, and do not approach vice, be it public or private. That means do not even think of it. That's what God is saying. Okay? Do not even think of vice because this is a private affair that you have inside your head. And that's a sin. It goes back to the do not covet. Okay. You shall not kill your children from the, from the fear of poverty. In the, in the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not kill, period. Here specifically it says that. So what does he mean by that? From the fear of poverty. Remember family planning? 
Because if you have children, then we are going to be poor. So we have to plan about it and fix it somehow. So that first statement, specifically for abortion, and the second statement, and then God says, and you shall not kill a soul. Otherwise, that statement completely redundant. Because he's saying the same thing twice. Okay? Point is, do we have, do we pay enough attention to these things? So as I said, you know, we, 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 uh, we go over these things and, and, but what I want to just tell you is that we have plentitude of human weaknesses and we are all battling against it all day long. Okay? And you shall not approach the fatherless money except for what is honestly required until he reaches maturity. And you shall be honest when you measure the and weigh quotably. And do not we do not burden any soul beyond her means. And when you are testifying, you shall be equitable even against your own relatives. <clears throat> okay. Thou shalt not bring false witness. Okay. Well, you know, the excuse was, well, we didn't have these stuff in our own language, so we couldn't read those other ones. Came in their own language, said the same thing. They still didn't like it. Well, this is in Arabic. Why should we say it in Arabic? Why can't we say it in our own language? Your own language is not going to say anything different. It's going to say the same thing. The English version and the Arabic version are not different. They are going to say the same thing. People who don't like it, they're going to make up all kinds of excuses not to obey it. So now what I want to do is I want to go to chapter 16, verse 98. And God says, therefore, when you read the Quran, you shall seek refuge in God from Satan the rejected. Okay? This statement is a singular statement. And it has to be. This is not like prayers. Praise, we all agree to come here, and we all agree to worship God alone, and we want to make contact with Creator. So I can say, on behalf of everybody, because we all agreed upon that. Guide us to the right path. I cannot say, we seek refuge, because I don't know what's inside your head at that time. Only God knows that. And so you have to individually ask this statement before you start your prayers and before you start the Quran. So when we do it tonight, when I say, I say it on my own behalf. That does not include you. Because all of us have a different thing in our heads at that time, only God knows that, and God will give you refuge once you ask Him to do that. Okay? Once you do that, indeed, He has no authority over those who have faith and put their trust in the Lord. <clears throat> okay? Indeed, his authority is only over those who take him as their Lord and those who set partners for him, God, the other worshippers. <clears throat> okay? Then he has all kinds of authority over these guys. Show them the crooked way, they follow it, and everything. Okay? So my point is that when we do that, you don't have to say it loud, okay? So when we, when we do the Quranic study tonight, you can say it inside yourself, okay? I seek refuge in, in God from Satan rejected, and that's it. Then he gives you refuge. At that time, you know what's inside your head. I don't. I know what's inside my head at that time. 
X, Y, and Z, they know what's inside their heads at that time. So they have to individually ask for refuge from Satan. Okay. And God will give you the refuge. God will protect you. But I cannot do it on your behalf. You cannot do it on my behalf because we don't know what's in each other's heads. Okay? See, that says, vice be it obvious or hidden. So what does it mean hidden? Go and lock the door or something? That's one way of doing it. And the other way is you're thinking about it. And that goes back to thou shalt not covet. Oh, these are all different. That was like this and this and this. And our Quran is like this and hasn't been touched. There are no mistakes in it. Okay? Like two two-year-olds. Okay, fighting over that. Mine is better than yours. That's the knowledge that that Satan permeates inside people's heads. <clears throat> okay. And they follow it. So we have to make sure that we understand these words of wisdom. Okay. Otherwise, we're going to be just like the rest of the people. We even envy their way of living. We think that we should be better, we should be like them. Remember the people of Moses, they said, oh yeah, we want to go back to Egypt. You know, we have cucumbers and stuff like that. We want cucumbers. This stuff is boring. We don't want it. Okay? He said, well, you had that. Why don't you go back to Egypt? Okay? Just after he saved them from slavery and, and, and humiliation and everything, they still wanted that pride of the day of ignorance. Okay? We drink because they drink. They look cool when they drink. Okay? So that's called pride of the day of ignorance because we did not understand it. So, the point about this whole thing is that, that if we do this, if we continue doing this, continue abrogating those commandments that I read in 6.151, okay? if we cheat people out of their belongings, if we sell it too expensive or give them a very little, that's not equitable scale. Okay. So, when we are reading the Quran, okay, we have to look at it in a in a way that God wants us to look at it and ask God to help us in this in this endeavor that we are going through. Again, be very careful. Okay, as I said, you should be responsible for your own actions, your own thoughts, and from those thoughts that Satan puts in your mind, okay, and sometimes they are enjoyable, people enjoy those thoughts, then those thoughts that Satan puts, puts you in that situation, okay, you only know what's inside your head, and you have to ask God to give you refuge from Satan, the rejected. Not me. I can't do that. That's why appropriately God says it, that that's a singular commandment for individuals. Because when you open up the Quran, every one of us have a different thought. <clears throat> okay? A different, as I said, plentitude of, of weaknesses, but we have one of them, and Somebody else is another one, and so on and so forth. Okay? They're infinite with them. So again, learn from these verses, okay? And ask God to help you. Today, as I said, I ask that, but I cannot do that on behalf of everybody. You have to do it yourself. Okay? 
and then we'll go about our business, okay? And God will help us, inshallah. So I'm going to stop here. <clears throat>